in France, some taxi guys get upset about Uber, they shut down the country. We here in South Africa, our country says we have no electricity, we figure out a solution. Yeah. Right. Um, rightly, we should be challenging the state, but in reality, the opportunity cost of challenging the state versus solving my problem is, yes. is something that we go through in our oh heads. Oh my. Hello, 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 and welcome to yet another episode of the Conversation Capital. First things first, Ubonga Bwata. How are you doing, girl? <laughs> I'm good, girl. How are you? No more Bonga Bwata. I'm so sorry. For <laughs> I, I seriously don't mind. Really? Yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, today we're chatting all things to do with retrenchments and retirements and things like that. I mean, just looking at the economic climate that our country is facing at the moment, this is something that's coming up more and more prevalent. And so we decided to bring in our financial guru, friend of the show. Did you guys get that? That tells you who it is. <laughs> Hi, Tammy. How are you? Tammy Netta. Hi and welcome. Are you good? Thank you. Thank you for having me back. Thank you so much for coming through. So yes, we're chatting all things to do with retrenchments. Um, retirement is definitely you know, a function of you'll get there eventually. But mm-hmm. I think retrenchment is the one that can kind of throw you off balance, yeah. you know. And so just, yeah, just launch off question would be like... How do we navigate spaces like that? I've got a good friend who um, recently experienced where like she's got like five, six months to work. Mm-hmm. And yeah, that's when I realized this is something that we actually need to touch on. Bonga actually realized this is something we actually need to touch on. And so, yeah, let's just start there. How does one plan for retrenchment? Um, I think you don't. Uh, <laughs> the average person should not live their life expecting to be retrenched. Uh, if you don't perform, you get fired. If you do perform, you get a bonus. If you stay in the middle, you're grateful you have a job. Mm. And so uh, being retrenched is a function of the business not performing in, in a particular way or business decisions being made that are outside of your control. Mm. So you can be p- doing very well at your job, yeah. but what happens is the company looks at your number. So they look at what you cost them and they look at can they or can they not do without you in its survivalist state as a firm and they make a decision so i think that's the hard part about it that you actually are out it's outside of your control mm. uh having experienced it myself mm. uh when you really are performing well you always perceive yourself to always have a, a good future mm. but when the company starts performing well regardless of your performance then the risk of that retrenchment comes up uh the recent big one was multi-choice uh, mm. so it's it's quite a difficult thing because on the company side, they're looking at a number, your cost. On your side, you have your life. Mm. Um, and I think it's a difficult thing to navigate. Uh, it does a lot to your self-esteem. Yes. Mm. Uh, because you have to work through the fact that this is actually not a result of your poor performance. Mm. In most cases. In some cases, they offer you a package because you're not performing, but that's not a retrenchment. Mm. Um, so, so it's a difficult thing to navigate through, uh, emotionally especially. But financially, you pretty much always have to try and put yourself in the position where you can exist without income for six months. It's a very hard thing to do. Uh, Very hard thing to do. Because as you grow your life, your expenses grow, your Mm. spending grows. Mm. Um, So ideally, you want to put away an emergency fund of about six months uh, because the assumption is in six months you could find a job, which on its own is a poor assumption, right? Because you can be out of work for a much longer period. Mm. Uh, we must accept we live in the developing world and mm. because we live in the developing world labor markets are not as efficient mm. um so you getting a job is not Can always a function of your skills and your qualifications mm. it becomes a function of your relationships or people who are willing to lobby on your behalf mm. uh, which is not always easy yeah um, so uh, it's a very difficult thing to experience um, and i think there's a lot of emotional darkness there that most people don't want to address yes um the identity attached to waking up bathing being in a taxi going to some place every mm-hmm. day is underestimated mm-hmm. uh productivity is also underestimated mm-hmm. so to give an example so in a country how we measure productivity we call it gdp gross domestic product mm-hmm. which is the sum of all the goods and services produced in a year so what you are doing here in one way or another will be accounted for in gdp in dollar terms. Yes. Now we measure that per person, we call it GDP per capita. So as an individual, how much do you as a citizen contribute on average? Mm. And we measure those things against other countries to measure productivity. Now when you are not there, unemployment for example is high or you are retrenched, it affects that number. Mm. 
So you are not contributing to being the yeah. productive person in the economy. And that's a hard thing to deal with uh, at a macro level and at the micro level. And, and I love how you're looking at like a very holistic approach to it in the sense that it's not just about the money, the knock that one takes mm. from being retrenched. And, it and can almost make you feel like you weren't valued. And how can you not be valued at where you give 80% of your weekday time you know what mm. i mean so that in itself can be quite a thing to do and i actually never thought of because i think if i were retrenched right now it would be surely there's another person down the corridor <laughs> that you could have retrenched over me or you know the selection process thereof can be in itself quite an emotional mm. and can take quite a knock at one's self-esteem yes Bonga. and actually in the context of how we came up with this topic mm. it's the entire company so about 300 and something people yes. are losing their jobs mm. Mm. And I think that's the, that's the side we always have to recognize as someone who's employed is that you are a cost to the firm. Um, and in the, in the event the firm wants to reduce costs, especially if you work in a company where your intellect is what you're selling. Mm -hmm. So if we're selling shoes, it's a different thing to when we're selling intellectual property. So your creativity, mm -hmm. your brain. Uh, at some point, they look at you and say, is this person worth the cost? In, in exchange for the business surviving. Hmm. And at that point, you are a number. Mm. Right? And they'll, so they'll, make the, they'll make the calculation and the people who they find to be excess, because now all they need is the people they really need to survive, mm. then you, you, you may find you get the X. So it's a difficult thing to accept because uh, you, you basically have to go through the five stages of grief. Right? Mm. You've got to get to acceptance quickly. It's just outside of your control. There's nothing you could do about it. Mm. The company, entrepreneurs prioritize profit making. Mm. That's how they make, that's, that's their that's return. Great. They get paid last. So everyone else gets paid first. This, this, you get paid first, the staff gets paid first, the suppliers and creditors get paid first, the bank gets paid, everybody, SARS gets paid first. And then at the end, they take the profit. Now, if they're in it and they're not making profit, then they have to find ways to get themselves to that point. Mm -hmm. uh, and if we then see life through those lenses that, in essence, I'm a cost to the firm. Yes. No matter how nicely the firm treats me, when they do the accounting, need... I'm an expense. <laughs> That's so true. Uh, and, and not just me, but the desk I occupy, that square footage costs the company something. The laptop I have costs the company something. The internet I use in the office cost the company something yeah. so me being there is an a very 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 significant expense and the way only way the owners of the company can justify my presence is if my presence provides them a return mm. and when that stops happening you will be asked to exit mm. which is harsh but now let's talk about your personal experience with retrenchment yeah how did you survive well Two things. The first thing is, uh, I worked in financial services, so you typically get outsized bonuses uh, mm -hmm. in that environment uh, for performance. Uh, so I saved a lot of them. Mm -hmm. um, secondly, I think in general, I like to keep myself occupied. So I can't, I can't wake up after six. It's just mm -hmm. so I, and I don't know why. I can't tell you why. Mm -hmm. uh, so I really keep myself occupied. And then, I guess the last reason was I went into business for myself and starting a business on its own is quite... So was it a uh, blessing in disguise for you? Um, so, so there's two things that I always separate. So there's entrepreneurship and, and being a businessman. Mm. So uh, I'm typically a businessman. Finance has always existed for years. I haven't created anything new. Um, entrepreneurs see a whole new thing, a whole new gap and bring in a new product. Mm. Uh, so because I'm a businessman, what we really go for is to try and do better than the next guy. Um, so we can take market share and have an arbitrage. So I don't know if it was a blessing in disguise or not. I just did what I had to, had do, to at do at the time. The time. Mm. Um, so I'm accidental at this. Uh, I, mm. didn't, I didn't wake up planning to one day own a business uh, mm. or start one and build one. Uh, mm. I think I woke up wanting to make money, uh, secure my family, and then live on a beach somewhere. Um, and it didn't work out like that. So I, I can't answer. Honestly, I can't say it is or it isn't. Uh, you just know that this is now. what had to happen. Yeah. And the downside of that is, which is the other side of, of retrenchment is, and just like 
in ESCOM is an example, it's the longer it takes to solve the problem, the harder it is to solve the problem. Mm. Mm. So the longer it takes for energy to be resolved, the harder it will be to resolve energy. Mm. So the longer it takes for you to get into a job, the harder it will be to get the job. Because yeah. you can do three months, you can do six months, but once you start bleeding into a year, they're like, why are you still not employed? Like, why are other people not hiring you? Yeah, like, what's okay. wrong for a year that you haven't... And then it bleeds into no, a year and a half. What you're saying, I'm worried that now we're going a, to knock at people's self-esteem that are listening. No, it's a real thing. Like, it, I, it is. I, 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 we have to be pragmatic. It's a real thing. Uh, and you have to deal with it and prepare for it. You have to prepare your mind for the fact. And, and I, I think one of the hardest things we have to make peace with as mm. people who live in our part of the world is we live in the developing world. Mm. The developing world has volatility. Mm. Things don't, mm. don't things don't work in, in stable cycles. Mm. We are not we are not in the Western world, which is why when volatility hits them, it's catastrophic, what right? It, so the two thousand and eight was catastrophic because that's something that's not normal for yes. them. Yes. Whereas we live in a world where election cycles are volatile, yes. production is volatile. There's a lot oh that my. happens. Currency I is hear volatile. What you're so we we live in a different part of the world, and yes. we have to accept that because we live in this part of yes. the world, there's a risk associated with that, mm. and we need to then prepare for that risk. So it's the same as saying, you know, electricity production or supply of electricity is going to be volatile. Yes. So you need to prepare for that so you get solar, for example. Mm. Uh, if you know that water is going to be a problem in the future, you get a borehole. Yes. Uh, and so you, you guard yourself against the volatility oh, of the environment, the environment you live in. Yes, yes. Right? So I think it's important as a person who has a job in this environment to put themselves in the position to protect against that volatility. Mm. And I feel like, you know, another thing that scares me personally is just how I'm learning how there isn't security in any industry. Maybe you can correct me on this, but like I recently read something about the rate of unemployed doctors we have. Imagine. A doctor. Who would have thought? Oh, sure. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? People it's such like a difficult sick. program to mm. get into. Uh, and then you study for this many, many years. They are, the what do, market is there when I, market is and people are there. So, you know, and that's what I've just learned. Like nobody's safe from this volatility mm. or the environment. So then if we're looking at the fact that, you know, you know, there's this volatility and we're looking at that there's no career that you can kind of hide yourself under, well, depending on the season and what was necessary at the time or whatever, really. Um, but how does one then prepare for volatility? Like, is the thing to go move to Canada? Like, what's the, what's the solution? Uh, we're in this state. What do we do? I think um, solutions are focused on who you are as an individual. Mm. So there's some of us who can, I think there's three types of sort of buckets of people from the developing world. There's the type that can go overseas and live comfortably as a migrant. Um, there's a type that goes to Harvard or Yale or Oxford and wants to come back. Then there's the type that stays and waits through whatever obstacles that are before us. You've got to figure out which type you are mm. and each type has its own rules and skills required. Um, and I think we all have to face some volatility at some point. Uh, the Western world faced the Industrial Revolution. We will face AI. We all are going to face something. So mm. it's important to have the skills. And I think the most important skill, mm. or two of the most important skills, is the skill to learn quickly mm. and the skills to adapt. Um, I think every other skill you can, you can learn, but if you think about it now, even if you studied medicine, radiology mm. as a as a medical like subset as in mm. trouble because AI can analyze your lungs and the photos much better than a human can. So if you then have spent 15 years and you've got a PhD in radiology, you now have to think about things very differently mm. um, and you have to face that volatility. Uh, and it's going to, some, it will always be there. For us, we live in the developing world, mm. it's going to largely be economic and social. Mm. For others, it's going to be a different thing. So we all have to Financially so prepare. Yeah, I'm just yeah. because I'm thinking um, recently at the institution I work at, we're chatting about you know uh, Chat GPT so mm. much because I'm in the academic mm. space obviously, and just what the dynamic looks like. And uh, I remember during one of the the sessions, the question was always you know um, what if students use the thing? What if students use Chat GPT to answer stuff? Like that? And then somebody else said no, but what if Chat GPT starts taking our jobs actually, <laughs> and they start using it to create because you can ask it to create questions, yes. mm. to teach content. 
then is there really a need for the teachers then mm. you know and i actually as you say i remember when they said it i was like ah but you actually you're speaking like a real reality here that ai is getting to it so what are you saying was all be programmers what do you think no what i'm saying is <laughs> uh ai is not going to destroy the world it's going to change it sure. so we who live in the part of the world where there's a lot of change have a strategic advantage to those who don't live in a part of the world who don't experience change often. Mm, mm. So we must use that to our advantage. And we know how to prepare for storms because we do it often. Mm. Uh, it's why we are over-insured in South Africa. So mm. every person's got household, car, life, yes. burial. And it's because we're preparing for that mm. volatility, right? Mm. So it's the same way you've got to think about your life and your career that um, how do I put myself in the position that I can embrace and manage change. And as a person who lives in the developing world, you have a strategic advantage to the person who doesn't mm. because you are used to the rand changing every every week. You're used to uh, some political events that drastically affects yes. things and yes. you're used to striking. And and so whatever, there's mm. no electricity now. There's this, so there's always something. Mm. Right? And the mere fact that we say H because if, if you compare South Africa and France, in France, some taxi guys get upset about Uber. They shut down the country, right? Because you're disturbing mm. our way of life. Mm. Uh, we here in South Africa, our country says we have no electricity. We figure out a solution, yeah. right? So we are a different. Yeah. There's, there's, a, there's a different thing for, for us there. Um, mm. Rightly, we should be challenging the state. But mm -hmm. in, re in reality, the opportunity cost of challenging the state versus solving my problem is, yes. is something that we go through in our heads. Oh my. And we, we, we then sit there saying. and say, I, we can, I can do everything I can to get a million people to, to, to go to ESCOM and shut it down, mm -hmm. or I can spend 120,000, 130,000, whatever it is, to put a solar it's panel a, yes. and move on with my life. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. so there are varied solutions to all of us, to all these things, and I'm not this. I know of a company one recently better. that had to, uh, everybody just had to take pay cuts because of the production that's down during hmm. load no shedding. Mm. And, and that was their solution. Yeah, and, and if you don't like that solution, you leave, right? Yeah. Or you accept it. Mm. And if you don't like what's happening in the country, go to another place. And, mm. then, and, and also that, people make it sound like it's a panacea. It's not. There's, there's a drastic amount of change you go through living in a part of the world that's not you. It's an away game. So to, to put it in, in sporting terms, there's a home game and away game. Mm. Home game, all your fans are there. They can even impact the ref. You generally play better. You know the field. It's your. It's to your advantage. Mm. An away game, it's someone else's pitch, someone else's fans. You don't know how the referee is going to blow. You have to travel to get there. And you, it's a difficult experience. Yeah. And it's hard. So if you're going to immigrate and go to Australia, Canada, New Zealand, whatever, that's an away game. Mm. You there are nowhere near understanding everything that those people mm. do. And you're going to have to learn that. You're going to have to learn that and adapt. And by the time you do that, you're 30 years in. And maybe your kids will do that. But mm. it's, it's one of, you are also going to have to deal with volatility even in moving to the UK. Mm. So even the solution you think is a solution is in essence volatile. Because mm. of the, the, the space and the capacity yeah. of you as a person it's to be a able whole to different adapt thing to, to a different culture, different yeah. way of doing things. I hear what you're saying. An example of that is, so people in the Western world work long hours, mm. 60, 80 hour weeks, mm. for example. Mm. Uh, we don't. Yeah, we don't. absolutely and, not. <laughs> and, I'd die. <laughs> and we, we, we've always seen that to our disadvantage, but there's an element of it which is to our advantage. We have a certain lifestyle we enjoy. Yes. Right? Uh, which is why a lot of people are moving to Cape Town and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. There's a certain quality of life we enjoy because of how we are productive. Mm -hmm. Now, if you move yourself to another part of the world where the weather's not great, so all you've got to do is work, you live in a very, very small environment, mm -hmm. there's no going outside, there's, there's no a walking around. There's. So the, that lifestyle, if you've grown up 30 years the way we have, is difficult. Jeez. It's difficult and it's hard and you have to learn the customs, you have to learn how to operate in that environment yes. and that alone could take you a three, four, five year period. Yes. So it's not, it's not a simple thing. Let me say. Yes, it's not that the solution is we should all... Yeah. I'm going to Australia. That's not the solution. <laughs> okay. Well, it may be for you, but you know, not for everyone. What I like about the conversation around volatility and 
um, embracing any change that you may have to do because of the volatility is that the world is actually very open to that these days. Mm -hmm. There's so many options. It's not like you're, you are being, you are opening up your mind to a world that isn't receptive of that. Mm. So for example, if you do lose your job, in today or whatever now people have options to teach online um there is a pivot that you can take as as an option for you so you are being forced to change but you're also changing in a world that's very open yeah and there's so many opportunities around that like i was once on holiday in zanzibar and there was a lady who had been there for six months and her job was virtual Mm. and in dollars with the sun Yes. But living like she's on vacay every day mm. and she's mm. just, you know. Open. I love that. You're not yeah. saying that and it's in a, mm. it's like the internet op- opens up your world to so much yes, and so yes. many opportunities. People are doing surveys for money. People, yes. there's so many things people are exploring oh, yes. because of contextual issues and you're doing that in a world that's receptive of that. Of this options. Yes, of yeah. options. Well, I think it's also dependent on your skill, right? Mm. So mm. Uh, the option may exist, but if you can't address it, then, then that's the problem. So I think, that's the fundamental problem that developing. Um, yes, that developing economies face is do the to do, do does the population have the skills to address the change? Um, and and by population I even include those who, of us who have gone to university, high school, whatever it is. Um, and so so the skills required to address the change are the core element of it. Uh, so you being able to live in Zanzibar mm-hmm. and do what you do is because people are willing to pay you for what you do. Mm-hmm. So it becomes a function of your expertise correct yeah. uh, and then that yeah. i think is the key element that most people miss mm. that the reason why people can adapt and access and mm. most will say no COVID changed how we work mm. you're fine the remote work has entered the market but you still have to work mm. and you still have to provide value to the market and someone's going to be willing to pay you for it mm. and if that doesn't exist then there's a very big mountain to climb I want to chat more to the practicalities, um, and I don't think we have much time left, but if we can just touch on, and we, we spoke about it, that we wanted to move into the space a little bit around the concept of like, obviously you're saying six months worth of like um, savings, savings if you're in retrenchment. I want to speak specifically towards using um, stock files to save. Yeah. How do we efficiently use stock files? Because I think it's something that we still engage in, especially as black communities, um, where you know, you're in a group of five, six friends, each one this month you all give her 500 rand next month mm. it's this one how do you efficiently how, how do you optimize on a stock file or is that an option that we should still be using or are you saying rather put your money in the bank no um mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah i must give an answer okay so 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 i there's some things if they are broke don't fix it so the concept of a stock file is not going to change whether you're using an app or mm. people are coming to your house to collect money, mm. right? So the concept is you're pooling capital. So what we need to think about in essence is what are we doing with that money, mm. right? So our f- the challenge we face is that in general, as people, we know how to cooperate towards savings, mm. but we now need to cooperate towards production. Mm. So how do we make our money become more valuable in our society mm. and we push it towards that the the it's a double-edged sword because the pursuit of production int- introduces risk mm. because you can put your money into investments you can push your money into any form of productivity but there's then the risk of losing it yes right the alternative yes. is you can save it mm-hmm. but once you save it what do you do and most of the time it goes into consumption uh, or of some sort or the other. Be, some yeah, of it is helpfully yeah. hel- helpful consumption. So you buy a stove, a fridge, a car. Um, but a lot of the time, it's lifestyle consumption. Mm. So you'll buy soap and yes. lotion and all these other things. And those stock files are for things like that. Co- correct. Mm. So we now have to move our stock filling towards why are we not buying businesses? Mm. Right? Uh, and the flaw in it is we don't accept that we hunt better in packs. That if I'm trying to do it by myself, it's a lot harder. Mm. But if I'm doing it with others, it's a lot easier. So we hunt in packs. It's easier Mm. for us to pull down anything if we're all hunting together. So if you have got five, eight, ten people in a stock for Mm. all going after something, whatever it is, if it's stock market, if you want to 
start uh, some form of company, yes. you want to, whatever it is, the, 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 the venture is, mm. your goal is productivity. Mm. Mm. I think how then I we would, me? yeah, yeah I think I, yeah. would be more. So, so if you started a stock fell to buy chicken licking, yes. that then is moving towards the right way, in yes. my view, because that chicken licking, not only will it create jobs. So using the concept of pooling funds correct. to invest in something that will yield bigger returns than just saying the stock fell is to buy correct. Carol Boys. Correct. So so I think the last <laughs> number of stock fell was twenty billion a year mm. in South Africa. So you then can say if ten percent of that went into investments into the economy in one way or another, we're talking two billion a year. Mm. So let's even be more practical. Imagine if your stock fell started importing solar panels and lithium batteries. Right? Mm -hmm. Now suddenly you are in the market. Mm -hmm. You don't have to manage it. There's a group of people who can do that for you and so on and so forth. But the fundamental point is where we put ourselves in a position of strength is when we become participants in the economy instead of expenses to companies. Mm -hmm. okay. Simply put. So basically participating in creating jobs, participating in adding some kind of... Yes, yes. Even if the job that you're creating is only for yourself. Yes, mm. because yeah. because you're leaving space for someone else somewhere else. Yeah. Right? So so it's, a, it's, it's an important part of it. We don't... So productivity matters. And mm. I think if we channel our, our, our stock fell capital towards that, I think then we are, we are protecting even ourselves because eventually the returns will come in one form or another, to our benefit. Tell me, I know the last time we spoke, and, and you don't like to advertise for, you know, we spoke about easy equities, and you're like, hey, hey, hey. You know, advertising <laughs> no, I'll say they must pay you. Yeah, you I, I agree, I agree. But if you are just going to give us top two, top three things that you think, because the other day I was chatting to someone, and they said something very interesting to me, and I'm not a finance person, I, like I always say I'm in academia, or I'm in a voice of artist, depending on where I am, how I am. But, <laughs> and, who's asking? and so because of that, I'm always like listening out for like finance things because I know I didn't like study anything related to it. And this guy said, and I, I just didn't know that. Well, it's his opinion. And he said, where he's at right now, he would rather invest in art than in property. Wow, that's a, that's a big jump. It's a big jump. <laughs> I was also like, what? But he, shame, where, he had where, financial jargon that I couldn't really keep where, up with. Where, where does this individual live or... No, the, the South African. They were just speaking um, because specifically them, they work with. Ugh, I don't know why I'm sharing so much about this person's job, but they work with like curate or uh, rather yeah, okay. uh, consolidating so, art and things like that. So they understand the market. They understand the market okay, quite so well. So that's a very different yes, thing. Yes. Yes. Uh, so he's he or she is not saying they would rather invest in art than property. They are saying I know the game and I know how to make money okay. from that game. That's the difference. Right. Yes. Uh, whereas, oh, yes. Whereas property is mm. very different. If okay. you're not in it, mm. or you've never spent time investing in it. Uh, so generally, you must be concerned about people who make it seem easy to make money from an industry that mm. you don't understand. Mm. It's a scary thing, because if Ooh. they want your money that quickly, you've got to ask some questions about that. Okay. Right, about why. Why does someone want my money this quickly? And if their industry yeah, was making that much money, would they, they really want your money? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so you've got to... So it's easy to say all of us come and invest in property. Mm. It's a difficult thing. It's easy to say someone... All of us must invest in stocks, but who's saying that? Mm. If the person is a broker, then you know they make money from, from your transactions. Yes. Then you're like, okay, that's why you're saying that. Mm. Uh, if they're generally giving you knowledge and understanding, then that's a different thing. Mm. So I understand. That's why I was asking the question. I was asking, I understand what industry that. Are they yeah, in? because yes. then they are saying, I'm in this game. I know how to make returns from this. Mm. So okay. That's a different thing. That being said, answer the question. Wish people be investing their money right now. <laughs> uh, in, in, in businesses or industries, they understand. Hmm. So he's not wrong to say that because mm. he understands his Marie industry. Is like, yeah, yeah. 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 I'm in so, for example, yeah. like you said, you are in voiceover mm. and in academia. Mm. So the question should be, where in academia is there enough change to make money? Mm, so if mm. I if I invested in a particular part of it, and it the bet is right, how would I make yes. money? So uh, Kuro has made that bet, uh, and 
they will reap the rewards or suffer from making mm. that bet. And so have other advertakers and so on and so on. They mm. made that bet, right? Mm. So you've got to say, from what I know, when I look at my sector, yes, how is money made and how can I participate? Okay. And then once you're strong there, you can look outside. So will you, will you move away from just being uh, an employee cost company? Mm. And you start saying, how can I yeah, start getting more than just being the, the yeah, salary? Go, yeah, yeah, go to the other side of the economy where yes. you're the one producing and you're Ooh. the one creating the employment. And then are you encouraging everybody to go into business? Yes, I am. I'm not encouraging everyone to be a, a, a business person, but I'm encouraging everyone to be a business owner. Hmm. Oh, What's so, the difference? The difference I is... want to pay my time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, business person, different... business owner, okay? Yeah, business What's the person difference? is me. I, I have to drive the business and I'm responsible for it being a profitable enterprise. Mm. Business owner is a shareholder. You have a slice of the mm. business, you've given me your money, okay. and I'm going to look to give you a return. So when okay. you buy a share, you're a business owner. Okay. So mm. that's the difference. Oh, and actually, just you know, relating those two examples with, with regards to stock files and what you're saying now, I remember that there was a stock file that was feeding into maybe this is illegal, maybe I shouldn't be saying this, but we're feeding into a loan shark, and the loan shark was bringing obviously they bring ridiculous mm. returns mm. on that, and that those ladies, those people, they balling because they had a fierce <laughs> loan shark on their team mm. who was like, no, give me the money, mm. I'll make it grow. This is what sure. I'm saying. You know? So in essence, their stock fell was a part, was was a business owner. Yes, mm. they were all the owners in this loaning out business. Mm. Uh, what, what's the thing? They were FS registered FSB, not one of those. Uh, <laughs> just a regular FSB. <laughs> Thank you so much for dropping bombs of wisdom. As you know, right. always, if you're gonna give us uh, your last parting words with the individuals that just found out they're getting retrenched, what are you gonna say? Um, focus on getting mentally well. Because you are not going to get back into the market if you are not your best self. Mm -hmm. So you have to get back to being your best self. So every day, treat every day like a working day. Don't sleep in. Sure. Wake up on time. Dress up. Go sit at a coffee shop. Send your CVs. Mm -hmm. Go on LinkedIn. Meet mm -hmm. people in your industry. Love this. Be on top of mind of everybody you know. And continue to promote yourself. Uh, start a YouTube channel, sharing your knowledge, whatever the case may be. Um, <laughs> but continue to be active and productive mm. until you, you find yourself back in, in the market. I think it's important to remain active. Don't mm. allow your brain to settle because your spirit will, your soul will. And at that point, uh, you become the snake that's eating its own tail. And sure. at that point, it's a difficult hole to dig yourself out of. So stay motivated, uh, stay active, uh, leave your house every day. Mm. Yeah, even if you have to walk down to the corner, sit there, figure it out, uh, spend time in productive activities, read books, write summaries of books you read, like spend the time to really work on your character and yourself mm. uh, so that when you have the chance, because... What happened to me is when the chance came up for the interview for, I wasn't my best self mm -hmm. because I was out of it so long. I, I wasn't able to get myself back into that thinking fast mm -hmm. enough because you get a call today, you've got an interview tomorrow, you've got a thing in two days and it gets tough to get yourself back into that if you spent the last mm -hmm. two months on your bed. Yes. So you need to stay on top of your game. Yes and understand what's going on in your industry, in your environment, and be at the peak, peak of everything. Mm -hmm. uh, so that when the opportunity comes, you are more than ready for sure. it. Sure. Tammy, I really loved what you've said there. Mm -hmm. I really, I think in everything, even in like relationships, don't allow yourself to wall. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. Okay, that is back, obviously back, back rewind. <laughs> that is the end of today's episode. Once again, thank you so much, Tamineta, for always sharing so many bombs and pearls of wisdom. Bonga Bota, yes. <laughs> Bonga Bota. Thank you so much as well for being the voice of reason. That was today's episode of the Conversation Capital. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Goodbye and God bless. <laughs>